Good morning. This is Luke Revan, Assistant Manager here at East Brandywine Township. I'm addressing you in my capacity as online moderator for this work session of the Board of Supervisors. Due to the coronavirus pandemic and to protect the health and safety of township officials and our residents, the board is conducting this meeting via webinar. The meeting is being recorded and will be rebroadcast on the township's YouTube channel. Public notice of this meeting was posted in the Daily Local on September 11th and posted on the township's website consistent with Act 15 of 2020. The agenda for the meeting was also posted on the website at ebrandywine.org forward slash agenda center and is visible on your screen. Members of the Board of Supervisors, township staff, and uh, including myself, are present in the township building for this meeting. Members of the public can hear us, but your own phones and computer microphones are muted so we cannot hear you. To enable an organized meeting, we're using the following procedure. As with in-person meetings, I ask that all participants wait to be recognized by the chairman before speaking, and that all comments be directed to the board vice chairman, Jason Winters. In order to be recognized, you must first ask me, in my capacity as moderator of this webinar, to unmute your audio connection. You may request this at any time via the chat feature located on the left-hand side of your screen. Each person recognized by the vice chairman should state their name and address before asking a question. I'll now turn the meeting over to our vice chairman. Good morning. Welcome to the East Brain Wine Board of Supervisors work session. Uh, Monday, uh, sorry, Thursday, October 1st, 2020. Recording advice will be used during the meeting. <clears throat> uh, first thing on the agenda is the oath of office for Corporal Steve Tyree to uh, his rank of sorry. morning. Um, it's my honor to introduce to you uh, Corporal Steve Tyree and his family, his kids, and those Aprils in the room. Um, we're very honored here to be here this morning to um, witness the promotion of Steve Tyree to the rank of sergeant. Steve has worked for East Brandywine Township Police since November 1997. He was promoted to Corporal in October of 2018. He holds six unit accommodations and four merit accommodations with the police department. I say day in and day out that Steve is the heart of the police department in regards to all the technical aspects of our operations. And he is our JNET clean sieges tackle officer. He's the police department's internal IT technician. He is the RMS systems administrator for the PD. Our first aid CPR AED instructor, our lead crime scene evidence tech, and he's our property and evidence room supervisor. So I will ask the judge, uh, to issue the oath of office. Hey, would you like to stand on the other side of your body there? So you're going to raise your right hand and then place your left hand on the body. After me, I, Stephen Dale Tyree. I solemnly swear and affirm that I will support today as I can defend and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the laws and ordinances of the Township of East Brandywine, all the ordinances of the law enforcement code of ethics. I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office as police sergeant of the fidelity of my ability to the best. I will uphold, I will uphold, obey, obey, and enforce and enforce the law without consideration, without consideration to a person's race, to a person's race color, color of sex, sex creed. Orientation, sexual age, age, national origin, national origin, ancestry, ancestral handicap, ability.
<laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> now on to the next agenda item is the appointment of board chairman and vice chairman for the term ending January 4th, 2021. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I know you're, you're acting in the capacity of chairman, so I'm going to continue to refer to you as such. Um, there are a number of officers described in the township or the second class code for um, for townships. I would um, I, I realize that that um, um, uh, Mr. Scribner resigned as his in his capacity as chairman at our last meeting. Um, I asked for this agenda item um, so that uh, we could appoint a new um, chairman and vice chairman for the remaining six meetings of 2020 until our next reorg meeting. If for no other reason, and I know this sounds like a, like a, like a bureaucrat problem, I don't know what to put on our stationery. So I would appreciate <laughs> if we could get that resolved for the remaining six meetings. So I'd respectfully ask that you appoint those two officers. I'd like to make a motion um, Jason Winters to be the chairman. Actually, I, I would prefer to be Mr. Sherbeck. Um, so I would like to make a motion for Mr. Sherbeck. I don't think that um, based on the history with Supervisor Winters, he's shown the capabilities of being a uh, chairman at this point. But, um, you know, as you know, I resigned. I did it. Can you uh, tell excuse me, can me real quick. I, as you know, I resigned um, last meeting based off of some of the difficulties with working with the board. Um, I was honored to do it for three years. And um, at this point, again, I, I, I've, I've known both Supervisor Winters and I've known Supervisor now Sherbeck for several years. I think Supervisor Sherbeck at this point would be the better choice for the, for the chairman. Well, I, I'm gonna decline on new to the board. I don't feel comfortable at this point um, for the remainder of this year, I, I decline. Okay, well, considering I that. I appreciate the, uh, the mention, but like I say, I'm uh, due, due to the position and I decline. Jim, just as a point of order, where we, where we left this was there was a, a motion and what, and uh, is there a, a second for that? Uh, yes, I'll second it myself. Um, okay. Second class township code allows the supervisor to vote for himself as an appointment in the township. So I will second okay. that vote. Uh, well, I, I actually don't mean to, 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 to cut off any deliberation you'd like to do. I just would like to say that we had a motion and a second before discussion. So you, you may continue. Pardon my interruption. I will second that motion. And all there. Aye. 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 Hey. Uh, I would like to make a motion to appoint George Sherbeck as vice chairman for the term ending January 4th, 2021. The Board of Supervisors. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment for non-agenda items? Uh, I, real quick, I'd just like to, uh, as I said earlier, I resigned from chairman after three years uh, last, last meeting about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, the amount of support that I received, I couldn't let it go unnoticed. And I wanted to thank everybody, not publicly by name per se, but alone just during the meeting I received close to 15 text messages asking me why um, and if there was anything that the public could do and I would say no I, I, uh, I appreciated the opportunity uh, the first responders the uh, local uh, elected officials that reached out to me as well in the days to follow it was overwhelming uh, and I and I really appreciate everybody's um, sincere um, um, gratitude for, for, for the last three years of what, what I was able to accomplish. So I thank everybody for that without naming people publicly. Thank you. <coughs> I would like to make a, a comment. Um, Kyle, I hope you feel No, it's all right. It's, it's just the mic's so I'm not on camera. <laughs> I got you. He has returned to his office so we can keep our, our, our distance there. I hope you'll allow me to just make a comment um, regarding the um, remarks that you made uh, 
criticizing the process of selecting a solicitor last last meeting. Sure. Okay. Um, basically, talked about, during the process, you were critical that there was no RFP done. Um, and as I think, as you know, an RFP is not needed for professional services. Absolutely. Okay. Um, secondly, we did float several dates to you in order for you to meet the new law firm and finally settled on one. You were unable to meet, you know, make that meeting. And, um, you know, you didn't call the next day, whatever, to follow up to see if you had any questions on that meeting. So, yeah, and that's great. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, and I'm happy that even after the fact of the of the appointment, I was able to still save taxpayers money. And it's funny you brought that up because uh, Supervisor Winters went on record to state that we would not be paying for drive time from our new solicitor to the tune of two hundred twenty five dollars per hour coming from either Montgomery or Bucks County. I figured that fee to be about five hundred dollars with traffic or or give a give or take per drive time in and out. So um, when the contract or the um, said um, stipend request came across from from our new solicitor, in fact there was a travel time um, from to and from office and to our, from our township. So with uh, getting that on record, I was able to save the taxpayers that money, and um, the new solicitor has now since stated that he will not be charging us for drive time to and from our supervisor meetings. So, again, because of diligence and 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 paying attention to details, I was able to to get that accomplished. So, and I told Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Jonas, uh, though though I don't right now approve of the process of how he got here, uh, I will give him every opportunity to do right by the citizens of East Brandywine Township. And, uh, you know, I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'd like to just continue um, my comments. Sure. Uh, I'd like you to recall January 2018, where you voted to engage the law firm of Buckley Bryan as the township solicitor. There was no RFP, correct? Uh, no, we sat down with uh, several, several uh, participants for that, and we chose, uh, both Jason and I chose Buckley Bryan, yes. Okay. Um, did you give the minority member, Jay, an opportunity to meet the firm before the selection was made? That happened, which is the way this is supposed to happen. Good point. Um, that's during a reorg meeting when Jason was not in office. So there's a difference between doing it during a, during a work year and a reorg. Most appointments, in fact, all appointments, in my opinion, should happen during a reorg meeting, which is the opportunity for the uh, if there's a, a new supervisor stepping in or the or or uh, the existing supervisors, there's a period of time before the new year where uh, you know discussions are made so that you're not disrupting and costing taxpayers money um, to to charge uh, exorbitant amount of legal fees to get new solicitors of of all of all um, committees caught up to speed. That happens at a reorg meeting, in my opinion. Second. Oh, you want to, no, you just... I just want to comment. Um, there's no, there's no rule that there's a vendor cannot be, cannot be replaced during the year. There's no, there's no rule. There's no guidelines for that. The, the, the piece that say that's when you organize. That's you have to reorganize every year for the first Tuesday of the year for the second class township code. If someone's not doing a good job in the in in the eyes of of board. There needs to be a change. There's no reason you need to, you, we move on. We need to find the right people that we are happy with that can provide the services that the majority of the board are happy with. So if the, Mr. Sherbeck just said, he's new to the board, he didn't feel comfortable being a, a, a chairman, but he was comfortable in switching uh, services with, without even being here a month. So sure. what say you? What do you mean, what say you, Kyle? I'm talking to Mr. He, he shows up yeah, at every meeting. He sees everything. <laughs> every meeting? He's shown up at more meetings than most of the residents, yes. How many meetings did you say you were here to see during our during our tenure? I could say I've honestly seen you at probably 15 meetings over the course of my tenure. I, I couldn't deter, determine whatever. I came more than a lot of other participants. Okay. Let me just say that. That has nothing to do with making a decision. Kristen and I met, we met one-on-one, -on -one, and basically she indicated to me that if she didn't have the full confidence of the board, then things weren't going to work. 
So during my, I've had a personal one-on-one -on -one with her. And after that meeting, I made my decision that a change was needed. How about Mr. Oste? How many one-on-ones did you have with him? We had a presentation meeting. None? You made a decision to do away with the he's planning. Seen, he's seen him in action. He's seen him up here as a solicitor. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were coming to this defense. I'm talking to Mr. Well, Schroeder. I don't think this is the time to actually be bashing the board, Kyle. I mean, the we board brought up questions board. to me. I'm, I'll, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and stand by. I'll answer them accordingly. You, you're going to ask him how many meetings he, someone asked how many meetings during your tenure? He stated on question. record that you stated for him rather that he has been here all, almost all of the meetings. And I, I don't think that's almost all the meetings, 15 meetings. I've, I, I don't see that. Come up with these numbers. You just need, okay. You so need anyway, to start, Mr. Sherback, sure finish your facts. We, we had a presentation talking. which you did not attend, and I listened to him, checked, and I felt that he was the right one based on talking to other lawyers, etc. So, so, so you did talk with other lawyers. Yeah, I talked to lawyers. Okay, so I I didn't know that. See, this is this is great. This is coming out. I didn't. Did you talk to him with with, with Mr. Winters? No. Would I talk to who? Other lawyers? With Mr. Winters, no, I didn't talk to other lawyers. With I just got. I was just confused say, based off of your email where you said our new supervisor. Or, I'm sorry, our new solicitor, in a, in a in an email which had already alluded by using those words, our new solicitor in an email prior to his swearing in alluded to the fact that you guys had already made an executive decision to hire him. Well, that's your your email speaks volumes by what it says. Our new solicitor. It doesn't say our possible new candidate. It says our new solicitor. Therefore, it showed me that deliberations had taken place, which is a violation of Sunshine Law between the two of you. If I'm wrong, then the words speak for themselves. You misquoted. You shouldn't have said that. That's all. Well, Kyle, if you look at my emails, I have always said prospective solicitor. So um, that's only one vote. You know, so I'm just a new, that's a new point. Well, let's move on, if that's OK. No, I just had one other point, whatever, because okay. I just brought up examples before. But secondly, you selected a, a consulting firm to do a township study, five-year township study for $60,000. There was no RFP, and I don't believe that the minority supervisor in that case, Jay Fisher, was aware of this and had an opportunity to meet the firm prior to the decision and ask questions. That That's was all. a firm that you brought to, to the board's attention, Mr. Sherbeck, so I'm surprised you're bringing that up. Um, that was a firm that you brought to the board's uh, uh, attention to sit down and, and have a have a meeting with to discuss this possible uh, um, venture. So I was I was a citizen. You made the decision to go with the firm. Oh, absolutely. Okay? absolutely. I can bring as a citizen. You, you absolutely can. But I'm just surprised you bring it up because it was it was something that was brought by a citizen who was concerned about our township at the time, um, who happened to be you. And you asked the board if we would consider this 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 uh, firm, and the board did discuss it, and the board did did utilize them. Now, granted, I will tell you that some of what came out of that was was good, and some of it was 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 not, in my opinion, not great. But it was done, and it's over, and it was a referral by you for this particular firm. You made the decision. I, as a citizen, or any citizen, can come to the board and give say hey this is a good firm why don't you take a look at it you made the decision no rfp and did not allow the minority member to meet the firm or ask questions all i'm trying to do is point out there's been situations in the past you've been involved in and you were highly critical of this process going forward that's all i want to say subject done sure okay okay is there any other public comments on the from the audience no individuals in our um, digital audience have requested an opportunity to address the board. Okay. That said, we'll move on. The uh, old business community park trail extension project, contract release, final payment, and PICO green region, green region grant final report. Uh, Luke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please bear with me while I um, switch out the audiovisual materials. All right. I think even in these difficult times of the pandemic, it's important to celebrate our successes. 
I'm pleased to announce this morning that the project to build a trail connection between the Ferndale Lane cul-de-sac and phase two of the community park is now complete. I have projected some images of the finished product on your screen, a final payment to the low bidder, which was Construction Masters Services LLC, is also awaiting your signature in the, in the packet of, of checks before the board this morning. Uh, in ordinary times, this would be a, a moment where we would, we would gather and uh, cut a ribbon and thank the many people who made this possible. Um, in the absence of the ability to, to gather publicly and have such a celebration, there's a couple people I would like to thank for the record. Um, the PICO uh, Corporation sponsors a grant program called the PICO Green Region Grant, uh, which was awarded to the township for this project. They generously provided $10,000 for this project. Um, there are volunteers from three separate committees of the uh, township that contributed to this project. I'd like to recognize the Open Space Committee for their technical support in acquiring the underlying fee for this trail extension uh, the under, underlying land in fee for this trail extension. I'd like to thank our trails committee for their work championing pedestrian connect connectivity throughout the township and their contributions to the 2017 uh, East-West um, uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Facilities Plan, which includes references to this project. I'd like to thank the Parks and Recreation Committee for their input on the design. I'd like to thank the adjacent landowners uh, David Permy and Leslie Winters for conveying this portion of the land and fee for the trail extension. I'd like to thank Matt Van Lu and the public works crew who saved the taxpayers many thousands by installing the split rail fence that you see in these photos uh, in-house and not needing to go to bid for that portion of the project. I'd also like to thank the, the township engineer, Nate Klein, and his team for managing this contract and the competitive bidding portion of this uh, project. And lastly, I think a lot of credit goes to the Board of Supervisors for, for their support of ongoing projects such as this. So thank you. Um, my final report on the expense of this project was uh, that the township paid uh, 21,000 for the, for the land, um, paid um, through a competitive bidding process, um, approximately 90,000 for the construction of this length of trail and approximately $2,300 for the split rail fencing. And um, I've made a, a number of trips out there and I've yet to go out with my camera and, and not see individuals already enjoying the trail. So um, thanks to all involved, successful completion of this project. And there's a release for the final payment that's approved by Pannoni, I believe. Correct. Um, or just the well, th there's there's a check in your packet that you'll be signing at the conclusion of this meeting. I just wanted to prepare you for that. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is discussion on pollutant reduction plan and the culvert to run proposed project and update on MS4. Uh, Beth Miller from uh, Cedarville. Hello. Um, I'm. I guess my video is not operating, but thank you very much to the board for having me um, today. Um, Luke, am I able to share my screen? Uh, yes, you, you may be prompted for a download. There might be a slight delay, but you are a presenter, therefore you can share your screen. Okay. Okay. Um, but as um, as mentioned, okay, I think it's working here. Let me just check. I apologize for the delay here. There we go. Um, okay, so I'm here to talk about the NPDES MS4 Stormwater Management Program the township has, um, and also focus on the pollutant reduction plan requirements. Um, uh, again, my name is Beth Euler. I've been working um, with the township's MS4 program for the past uh, five or six years or so, and Cedarville Engineering Group has been um, working with the township uh, as stormwater engineer um, for slightly longer than that, I believe. Um, so first, First off, um, I would like to talk about 
why this program is important. Uh, in general, there's there's um, it's it's a state and federal requirement, um, and it's an unfunded mandate. So a lot of oftentimes um, it's easy to lose sight of of why the program is important because there are good goals involved with with it. Um, the the goals include reducing pollutants into the townships, municipal storm sewer systems, um, and the waters of the Commonwealth or streams. Um, and, and in turn, protecting water quality. And like I said, it's a state and federal requirement. Uh, if the township doesn't maintain the requirements, um, the, the enforcement mechanism is either uh, the Department of Environmental Protection. They conduct um, inspections in the Southeast region, I've been told, uh, once per permit term, so that's once every five years, and then um, the Environmental Protection um, Agency, EPA, um, they uh, are the, kind of the enforcing agency, and they will conduct um, audits on random, and they tend to issue fines um, when they do conduct audits. Um, so the program components include um, six minimum control measures, and um, if you've if you've I'm sure that there are some residents that if you have attended meetings before and, and the current board, um, this is um, all kind of review, but uh, minimum control measure one is public education and outreach. Um, just making sure that the public uh, understands the importance of preventing pollution to stormwater um, and what, what the township is actively doing to, to address stormwater pollution. Public involvement and participation, so required to uh, impart information like this at a public meeting um, once every permit term um, and, and East Brandywine does it more frequently. Um, so this this meets that require helps to meet that requirement, I should say. Um, the township also works with Christina Watershed's Municipal Partnership, which is run by nonprofit organizations that also um, help with um, minimum control measures one and two, as well as things like township staff writing articles for uh, the newsletter regarding stormwater management. Illicit discharge detection and elimination is minimum control <laughs> that uh, requires your, your storm sewer system to be mapped um, and the outfalls, the point at which it discharges into uh, the streams, monitored once every five years. Um, that has been complete um, uh, as of this year. Construction site stormwater runoff control is uh, mainly uh, taken care of by uh, the statewide agreement with the Chester County Conservation District and DEP through the MPDS permit for construction. Um, however, there is an emphasis on the township uh, implementing their own um, ENS uh, ordinances, which they do. Post-construction stormwater management for development and redevelopment. This requires uh, the township to maintain a, an inventory of all uh, stormwater BMPs that have uh, been installed since uh, basically 2003 and ensure that their owners or the responsible parties are properly operating and maintaining them. Um, and then pol pollution prevention and good housekeeping. This is making sure that everything that the township staff does internally is not, um, is minimizing potential pollution to the, to stormwater and, and the waters of the Commonwealth. So this is things like public works, um, garage, the salt storage, making sure that um, that's all contained properly, properly disposing of your um, uh, spent oil after oil changes, um, cleaning up spills after um, if, if anything occur, happens to occur because spills do happen and then documenting them. So that is also a big part of the, the program is, is documentation. And we, we work with the township to, um, to help to make sure that that, that occurs. Um, that's something that can always be approved upon, uh, but um, it, is, it is an important component of it. Uh, we just yesterday, the um, annual report documenting all the township's activities was due to DEP. That was submitted. Um, and today we want to concentrate on the pollutant reduction plan. Um, as you may be aware, the, there are two projects that were proposed to reduce sediment discharges to uh, Colbertson Run. Um, and these were the Colbertson Run stormwater improvements along Hawthorne Drive and, and the development. And then a stream restoration project along Colbertson Run itself at Hideaway Farms. And just to give you an idea of the township's requirements, Colbertson Run is listed as impaired for sediment and so is the unnamed tributary to Beaver Creek um, down in the 
southeastern, or I'm sorry, southwestern portion of the township. Um, the, the township is allowed to aggregate those requirements and proposed projects anywhere. So they have, uh, they've, DEP has approved the pollutant reduction plan uh, and the, the five year implementation period has begun. And township did get a head start with um, the culverts and run stormwater improvements within the development, uh, being proactive. Uh, proposed vegetated swales and five subsurface infiltration slash detention basins received a growing greener grant in june 2019 for a portion of the the construction of the project and, um, con the construction right now is ongoing and is anticipated to be um, completed within um the next couple weeks or the next within the next month or so i i, I don't think there's much left to do at this point um so the stream restoration is the last um, item in the reduction plan left within the five-year permit term. There's a 425 feet linear feet of stream restoration proposed um, along the um, Estates at Hideaway Farms HOA-owned property, um, as you can see there. It provides a 7.5% sediment reduction. So out of the 10% sediment reduction required, it's a it's a big chunk of the requirements. Um, and as of the beginning of this year, there was a feasibility study completed as well as a funding strategy completed. So that was the project consideration area going into the feasibility study. The feasibility study identified um, the design approach, which would be a floodplain restoration, um, project benefits of which there are numerous potential site constraints. So there are um, some apparent utility um, uh, locations, which is, which is common for any project. Um, that, that is important to be aware of moving as you move um, forward into design and then um, confirm the, that a design would be possible to con so that it would be eligible for credit for your pollutant reduction plan um, because not all stream restoration design um, is viewed as eligible by the DEP. Um, for example, riprap and hard armoring um, locations are not allowed to be taken credit for. Um, and the funding strategy identified potential project partners, and I'll get into that a little bit in uh, the next slide, um, and then provided supporting information for future grant applications, as well as um, ideal sources for uh, funding for those grants. So the, the feasibility study, we worked with a, a company that uh, specializes in stream restoration. Uh, option one is the 425 linear feet that's required to or, or will satisfy the pollutant reduction requirements for this permit term. Um, the cost opinion has been updated as a result of the feasibility study. There is a wide range of costs and that has a lot to do with um, where the, um, if there is an on-site location or an, a disposal location for the fill material that will be coming um, out of the project um, if the, you know, as the project moves forward. Um, so that is the initial cost opinion for option one, the 425 linear feet. The feasibility study also identified, you know, what would happen if we restored the entire length um, of Culbertson Run along this property. And um, we're not necessarily recommending that the township pursue this option. Obviously, the cost is, is extreme. And um, really, the reason it, it is also that's 3,000 linear feet. It's above and beyond what's required for this permit term. Um, it's not always... Um, it's not always a good idea to get ahead of the permit requirements because you don't know what's going to be what's going to be happening in, in the next um, in the future, I should say. However, the reason why I show this is because as you increase your linear foot of uh, restoration, um, the, it, the project becomes more cost effective. So over here we had 425 linear feet. Um, up here is 3,000. Uh, you're getting you're getting about seven times the length of the project for only four times the cost approximately. Um, so that's just to let you know that if, if there are project partners, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll um, talk about in the next slide, that would be something to consider because it would reduce the cost for for everyone. Here's a summary of the implementation schedule. I'll look at the township has been very proactive and um, will be complete the first project. And we'll just have ongoing operations and maintenance. Since it's within the Township Road right of way, that will be pretty similar to what the Public Works Department is used to doing 
um, currently. And then the Culbertson Run Stream Restoration, uh, there are several more steps involved. And as you can see, that takes us out to 2024, where I believe the, uh, the, it, the implementation date specifically is in August of 2024. So the summary and the next steps, actually, we would recommend um, moving forward with option one, uh, the 425 linear feet, just because of the, um, the cost involved with the larger project that obviously would require the township to have um, project partners involved, um, significant project partners, that should, I should say. Um, the, next, the next step beyond um, confirming with the board that option one is um, what, what is agreeable um, would be to coordinate with the states at Hideaway Farms HOA to make sure that they are on board with the project moving forward. So for grant applications and things like that, we would want to um, have something in writing, um, a project landowner letter of commitment, something of that nature um, to move forward before um, any additional money is, is spent on the project. And then coordinating with regulatory agencies up front. Now that we have um, a concept plan, um, we can we can present that to regulatory agencies and make sure that they're on board um, with the project moving forward. Um, and then I mentioned a potential project partner. Um, there were um, several identified in the uh, in the funding strategy. However, I think the the most important one or the, or, or one that would be um, good to entertain would be to see if West Brandywine Township uh, would be interested in um, uh, extending the project at um, the Estates of Hideaway for some of, to meet some of their pollutant reduction requirements um, so that there could be a cost benefit to both West Brandywine and East Brandywine um, Township um, for a project in this location. So that would be something where we would be looking to the board to see if you were interested in having us coordinate with West Brandywine to see if they were they were interested in pursuing a project here in coordination with East Brandywine. Um, and then of course, applying for a grant. The next time that a, a Growing Greener grant comes up or a Pennsylvania DCED Watershed Resource Protection Program grant, uh, we would recommend that the township um, pursue one or and or both of them um, for the implementation of this project. So that is all I have for you today. And I can stop my screen share. And I guess I would be uh, asking to see if the board has any questions. Um, you know, moving forward, we are mainly looking for support for the project and, um, you know, whether it's, something that the, that would be entertained to to partner with West Brandywine if they if they are, haven't already you know addressed projects or identified projects of their own um, as well as uh, coordinate continuing to coordinate with the HOA board thank you we have copies of our slide presentation uh, they are not in your packet. Not in the packet. No, I know they were in the packet. So, um, is that all? Is that only question? Yeah, I was just asking. If we get copies of the uh, of this, our presentation this morning. Uh, Beth, I think you know two things. One, I think maybe the chairman could reach out to West Brandywine and 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 get those questions answered. Um, just he has a relationship. Well, the board has a relationship. Not. Not all of us yet, but with West Brainwine, maybe he could he could start the process on that um, and and see if there's any issue on it. And then the other issue, not issue, but the other question I have is um, West Brainwine currently uh, has I wouldn't call it full swing, but they're pretty pretty um, engaged in that development process right now with Earth moving. Um, I would have to assume that the sediment is going to be higher on the West Brandywine side, but my question is, is that stream flowing toward East Brandywine or vice versa? So uh, the Culbertson one run headwaters, um, at least for the main stem, I believe starts in West Brandywine and flows into East Brandywine. 
Um, the, there is a dam immediately downstream of the hideaway uh, open space property, which is kind of what originates the main source of the sediment impairment. So um, this is something that is is typical. You know, there's there there have been many dams um, throughout the the Brandywine Valley, and what happens is when they were in, they were uh, constructed years and years ago, um, sediment it accumulates behind the dam for for years and years and years, and then the dams you no longer are in use, and they breach, and then the stream. Um, tries to meet the elevation that's downstream of the dam, and they and it does that by by eroding through all that accumulated sediment. So that accumulated sediment that's eroding from the stream banks is really what the source of the sediment pollution is that we're trying to address here. So, so yours um, and I apologize. I don't know who uh, West Brandywine's um, engineer is for for their MS4, but it, you guys aren't correct. No, we aren't. I'm not sure who it is either, honestly. So, so my biggest concern is you have, and, and it's no knock on West Brandywine, it's just it's, it's the nature of the beast. You have a development um, in, in, in high capacity uh, moving birth uh, right now upstream to us. Therefore, I think it would skew our numbers to be very, very high. Um, and I think the estates, uh, I believe the estates are the bigger houses uh, on Hideaway's property. To my knowledge, they have one more house left to build, um, and I just get concerned with all of the sediment because with construction that does happen, um, skewing our numbers uh, from construction up upstream. So I I don't know. Um, I'm not sure exactly of the development that you're referring to in West Brandywine, but if it's a recent development, this this Culbertson Run has been impaired for sediment. Hideaway Farms is in East Brandywine and West Brandywine. Oh, the, the West Brandywine portion of Hideaway Farms is what you're talking about. That's the one that's full swing right now, uh, erosion control, sediment, um, piles of dirt, earth moving, uh, groundbreaking. Uh, you know, if you drive through their development, which I do, yeah. on a, it's 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 full tilt. Um, yeah, I think that that, and actually, if I, I don't know if maybe it would be helpful for me to share my screen again and look at a map, but... Um, for example, let's see, um, Luke, if you don't mind, I'm going to see if I can pull this up. Um, so from what I understand, can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay. So from what I understand, the construction that's ongoing is, is like up in here. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I would say maybe dropping it about another Here. From, from the top to about the middle. Correct. Okay. So it's, it's like maybe mostly going into this unnamed tributary to Col Culbertson run. Maybe some of it is actually draining down into the main stem. And it's hard to, without, um, we're looking at a very, very, very small map. I mean, it's two inches by four inches. It's not very big. Oh, that's what you can see. Where your where your cursor is right now um, is that no. Um, so I I can't tell. Patriot is where you um, you Patriot Lane pretty much goes from the beginning of West Brandywine's uh, hideaway right into uh, the hideaway of East Brandywine. So Patriot's a really good um, uh, uh, breakdown for for. I see. Yeah, so Patriot Lane's up here, it looks like. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the project that we're talking about, the location we're talking about is right here. Um, the short version of it's right here. The long version of it would extend all the way down here. So right. so this, this, I guess there's a couple things that I, I would like to uh, address regarding your comments because they're, you know, they're good comments. The sediment impairment of Culbertson Run in this tributary um, is not due to current development. It has existed prior to um, Hideaway Farms. Um, it was designated as impaired for sediment. Um, details, I'm not exactly sure. Originally, it was that it was um, that one of the sources was listed as agriculture, um, but it's it's safe to say that the dam that's down 
downstream here of Hideaway Farms property has a lot to do with, with why this is listed as impaired for sediment. Um, so, so while that's a factor and yes, construction doesn't, you know, even with the best erosion and sediment controls, there's always going to be some sediment discharge. Um, and so understanding that that is a potential concern with, with getting into, um, you know, a project. I think that um, the, the way that a floodplain restoration project is designed is to design to um, attenuate flood flows and minimize any pollution coming from upstream. So it would be designed to accommodate any sediment load that's in, in the stream. And, and I also think majority of this is, is going to be coming into this stream with the, the unnamed tributary and not necessarily into the project area. Um, so while it's something that definitely should be, um, we should be aware of, and I agree of that, um, I don't know if it's, um, if it would be a factor with uh, the project location as currently shown. Understood. What it, Beth, what is the status with the HOA of Hideaway? <clears throat> Have we received written um, agreement with them allowing the township and the, their uh, contractors on their property? So we had last presented to their board, um, I believe it was July 2019, and we received permission to uh, conduct the feasibility study, basically enter their site. And I think that was in December, 2019. Um, and, and Matthew Van Luke can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, he's, he is courting, um, on behalf of the township also, but, um, so they agreed to that. They haven't, we haven't had any further correspondence with them. The next step would be to show them the feasibility study and say, Hey, this is what a project would look like on this property, are you willing to, um, you know, make a firm commitment to move forward with it on your property and, and have, have another agreement signed. Um, and that the first agreement was really just for access for the feasibility study. And um, we're kind of at, at the next step right now. Okay. Um, any other questions? No, I have no other questions. I'm good. Thank you, Beth. Okay, thank you. So are we, would you say that it's fair to say that we may reach out to the HOA board to present this information to them to obtain permission to continue? I think that would be the consensus. I'm sorry, I missed that question. What was it, Beth? Yeah, I just, I was just saying, I just was reiterating or confirming that we are able to move forward with um, coordinating with the HOA board to continue with the project and obtain permission to move forward. Do we have the board's, uh, uh, you know, consensus on that? Yeah, at this point, I, I real quick, I guess we should ask the board um, which option, uh, because I think that's important. Do you want to go over that real quick? Sure. What's your thoughts on on the actual project? Yeah, option one or two. I think depends on the HOA. I mean, well, we need to something to go with them with option one or two. What is the what is the estimated cost right here? Is uh, what, three? She went over that it was it was one it was over one million and it was under it was under I think four. It's option two and option one. Option one is the most less expensive one. Start with option one and get yeah, permission. I think so too. I just before you went too far with the HOA, yeah. obviously. What what are the benefits of option two? I mean, it's much more expensive. Uh, well, the benefits of option two would just be it's a more of a comprehensive floodplain restoration um, in terms of ecological benefit it would help the township to meet future pollutant reduction requirements. Um, however, you know, a lot of that is a little uncertain. So, you know, my recommendation would be for the township to pursue option one with the caveat that if WISP or anyone is interested in partnering, you extend it to meet whatever their, um, their requirements are. So it may not be till the full 3000 feet that option two described, 
but it may be, you know, say twice the length that um, that was identified in option one in order to meet West Branding Mines um, requirements. Um, right. But, you know, that, that being said, you know, there is a cost savings in extending the project amount. So, and you can't just necessarily with a stream project say, okay, well, we want to do 800 feet. Let's just stop it here. There's got to, you know, there's got to be something in place that where it makes sense to stop the project. Um, so it really depends on what, if, if West Bernie Wine wanted to um, partner and how long of a length that they would be interested in doing um, kind of, between option one and option two, you know what I mean? If East Brandywine was doing it all on their own, then option one makes, you know, kind of the most sense from a cost standpoint. Um, I, not, I, no, yeah. Sorry, I, was say, I think it's important that Jason reaches out to West Brandywine because who's to say, we don't know if they were planning on doing right up to, to our property anyway. And if that's the case, we're almost knocking two birds out of the park here by putting uh, our 425 feet with their possible 425 feet. So I think it's important that he reaches out to them and finds out what they're, uh, and they may not even be thinking about hideaway farms, but it's important at least we find that out. Okay. I'll thank you, down. Beth. Thank, thank you. And if you, you know, feel free if you would, you know, like me to uh, assist in um, providing any of information or any input on um, from a technical perspective, I, we'd be happy to. Thank you. Now for new business, we have the Bonzo Mill donations and events. Uh, HUD Volts is going to be the presenter. Yeah, HUD. Yeah, HUD is joining us. Uh, his microphone is muted, and now it's unmuted. Hi, HUD. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? So uh, members of the board, administrative staff, and uh, guests, I'm the... Uh, I'm going to start with dark first because I have a great segue into the Bondsville Mill, if you gentlemen uh, don't mind. Um, the dark uh, downtown area recreational consortium has been in business for 30 years, uh, and it is a uh, consortium of seven municipalities and the school district. And the mission is to provide uh, regional recreational services for our residents. And we've been successful uh, the past 30 years. Uh, and as a result, uh, the communities around us joined together to provide the uh, administrative and knowledge and sharing of resources to provide programs to our residents. And unfortunately, during COVID, uh, all of that came to a screeching halt. So you should have in front of you either a paper form or digitally three documents which uh, a doc which we, uh, reveal our uh, crisis for this year and our plan for going forward um, the yearly income for this year was trending upwards and unfortunately in March um, you can see the uh, previous year's incomes was uh, double and then triple and you know our income level dropped severely the board, uh, and I am your representative and have been for the past 15 years, uh, got together and decided to go virtual. We did some programs um, ad hoc uh, to try and make up the uh, losses. But the big uh, income um, earner for us is the camps. And unfortunately, with COVID uh, and not going green until later in the year, we were unable to... Um, get anything going that met the governor's guidelines. So uh, the decision was made to uh, cancel the camps, refund the money, and look towards a fall program. And uh, the fall programs, um, despite our best efforts, uh, have not been uh, successful except for one, which is called Soccer Shots. And um, East Brandywine was able to uh, provide uh, – six fields for this uh, private enterprise which is sold out it provided uh, activities for kids at home who needed something to do and who otherwise uh, would be on the field either playing soccer football etc younger children obviously and um, so we've been able to make more revenue in the fall than we thought 
but the picture for the balance of the year was not good. So we shut down. Um, we have some programs running. They kind of run independent of administration. Uh, we had the funds for it. And some of those program uh, instructors were willing to go ahead and uh, provide their services uh, within the COVID guidelines. So there is revenue trickling in, but we thought it prudent to just shut down and uh, lay off our staff, which included a uh, assistant and obviously the executive director, Nicole Luker, who I think most of you have met. Uh, she is still willing to come back in, the, uh, in January or in the second quarter of 2021 once things uh, clear up. So you'll see in the memorandum, which dated November 1st of 2019, that should be the third document there, our request for 2021 is going to be the same. Uh, it says 2020 request. Well, I guess that's for this coming uh, budget season. Um, but with the caveat that if we cannot restart, uh, that money will be refunded. Um, we're hoping to restart. We think the benefit to the community is to restart. And we were able to bank uh, $30,000 of revenue uh, from this year towards a restart of next year. So uh, we're not without resources, but we do want the board to and the budget committee to consider our request as an actual request, one that we feel is reasonable. You can choose the lower number there, 15,750. Uh, and you'll see also that our participation rate has been going up from 11.3 to 14% of the total. We average it out to 12.7%. That's how we come up with the what amounts to a subsidy. You know, it provides a rainy day fund in the event. Some of these activities, particularly outside ones, get canceled because of bad weather, et cetera. Um, which we have had in the past, uh, but this fund, probably the balance of what we have in the bank right now is $30,000 uh, from what I would call municipal subsidies. So with that said, I'm just here to provide my report and explain without um, having to come to the budget committee and taking up that um, organization's valuable time. I'm providing you with the information and the background for what we had done this past a year and uh, what we plan to do in the uh, early months of 2021 and hope you will continue to support us. We realize that the funds are tight, times are difficult, um, but we would like uh, DARC to continue. We have made contingency plans for shutting it down, but when we look at uh, what that would mean to the township providing um, you know, programs, staff, uh, to, that do the same things we do. It's not just recreation. It is uh, instructional programs, everything from computer to dance to um, learning how to, you know, take pictures, photography, otherwise. So those are the things uh, that I wanted to uh, bring to the board's attention. And now for my segue into the Bondsville Mill, um, we were able to uh, attract, I'll put it that way, a volunteer from a staff member who retired from DARC in late uh, 2019. Her name is Lisa Bowser. She happens to live across the street. Oh, no, she doesn't live across the street. She has a property across the street from the mill, and she's been watching carefully what's been going on over there. So when she retired, I began recruiting her to assist uh, Sandy Moser and us with our programming. Uh, she was our camp director and program director at DARC. Um, she has uh, time on her hands and she has the desire to help us. And Sandy, I'll be honest with you, was getting burnout and others were helping her. Uh, but her primary uh, focus is on gardens, butterflies. Um, and we needed somebody to give her a hand with regard to marketing. So Lisa is that person and we onboarded her uh, right after Labor Day and within the first 30 days, she came up with uh, a lot of ideas which ordinarily would be wonderful. Uh, you know, we would just jump on them, uh, parking permitted and um, go ahead, obviously with the board's notice, knowledge and approval. But some of these things because of COVID 
need discussion. Um, and I wanted to bring to the board's attention and find out what the parameters are given our situation versus EBYA or the park uh, at Dilworth uh, Road. Our situation pretty much is governed by the number of parking spaces we have there. And the, on a good day, that might be 30, but with the residents parking there, uh, it's usually 20. So we're looking to provide uh, some programs which don't need much parking. One of the ones we came up with was uh, the Monarch Butterfly launching and tagging on their road to Mexico. That was a great success. That is done Saturday and Sunday all day and uh, is advertised through the website and through Facebook. So the, um, the next one coming is October Meet the Trees program which is a self-guided program we're providing uh, booklets, uh, pens, pencils, whatever it takes for f folks to go through the woods and pick out leaves, uh, various leaves from trees and identify them as beech, birch, oak, whatever. And uh, for the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, it helps uh, satisfy a, a merit badge requirement for all the others. It's just a good walk in the park for their uh, friends and family. Um, so that one seems to be COVID compliant, but here come a, a couple suggestions that I thought uh, deserved the board's attention. We ran them by uh, Luke, and uh, he agrees that uh, we need to talk about what can and can't be done there in the coming months, at least. One of the things that uh, was brought to our attention by Lisa was a flag burning ceremony for Memorial Day, and we already have a a flag uh, destruction box outside the township building. Uh, I think well, that was a scout project many years ago. But uh, when you retire a flag, you're supposed to burn it. So uh, I know the box up there is full frequently because I dump my extra uh, or older flags and retire them through that uh, mailbox. But the suggestion was to have a more formal program at the mill uh, limited to the number of parking spaces that we have, but possibly to have a speaker, possibly to have refreshments. And, you know, I think it's a great idea uh, if we can pull it off and limit it to the first 20 cars um, that uh, respond. Staff or volunteers would park down at the other end right now, the, the southern end, I'll call it, where the, uh, the bridge is and the uh, concrete pad is. So there would be uh, SUV type parking down there for people that have them. But we wanted to get the board's take on that and on another program, uh, a holiday open house um, where we would give out uh, calendars uh, that would identify what programs we would have in 2021, which we have a list of those too. I'm not going to go into them now, but I wanted to get the board's read on how far they think or you guys think we can go and this to a great extent is limited to covid uh, but we wanted to see what you thought would be acceptable uh, if we could limit the number of participants and also whether the board would um, approve a donation box uh, at the site i had i wanted to talk to the chief about this first for security purposes and maybe i need to do that before I, uh, we format our uh, ideas on this, but a donation box, and I guess just some ideas on this uh, on these programs that we've uh, specked out with Lisa Bowser's help. So anything you could give me, give me some guidance, whatever would be helpful. I, I like the uh, HUD, thanks. I like the donation box. I just recently did a, what, a one and a half hour tour with Jim Buxala. i um, very impressed with what's been done, but I was, I was surprised kind of that there wasn't a um, donation box, you know, right where you where the programs might be. So I, I, I think that's a good idea. And events, I think the more, the more events we can have to bring people there, the better. It's just going to be subject to the, I don't know if it's 25 people COVID event right now or what, but I think events are great. Um, do you get to have him go to the chief? Yeah, the um, you have power down there, right? Right, HUD. 
We do. Yeah. I mean, I think that would be the biggest thing. You might have to have a camera uh, uh, in, in the direction of the, of the box. Um, and uh, um, obviously, you know, I think most people are good intentioned, so I, I, I don't see it being... As as you know, we have had some vandalism down there, so we do have cameras, but that's a good suggestion. We would definitely point one towards the location of the donation box. Correct. Yep. Would the, the donation box be like, um, isn't the park closed off? Is there a gate that goes across the park after dark? Yes. Yeah, George, there is a guardhouse there, and directly adjacent to that is the notice that the park closes at dusk and opens at dawn with a gate now people can walk around that gate and obviously uh, entry can be obtained through any of the other access points but that would be the location of the right the box. so having a box on the other side of the uh, gate is not a yes. it's not a preventing factor for somebody yes. who wants to uh, steal okay yeah we obtained a, a box that uh is there for informational purposes it's typical whether you see it at a car repair shop you know you put your information in and that's a locked box but it wouldn't be strong enough to hold i think cash donations and i think we would get a fair amount of those maybe some people would give us checks because we'd put east brandywine foundation on that but you know i, I think i'd want to talk to the chief about what kind of box we should put there and where we should put it and how we would secure it in addition to the camera. So I can do that with the board's blessing. Go go ahead in my opinion. Yep, I am as well. Uh, All right, what about these programs? What do you think? You think we can still go ahead with the uh, November one for the flag burning and a like a holiday open house limited to 25 people? Yeah, if, if you don't mind, may I chime in just on the on on where we stand with COVID and with the precedent we have with other events? And um, uh, please understand it. I don't enjoy being a party pooper, but I, I do want to describe what the current rules are and yeah. what the committees have elected to do. So the, the current rules are that we are not to have meetings indoors with more than right. twenty five people. And we are not to have meetings outside with more than 250 or 100. It, it, 250. 250 is the current rule for outside. So there is nothing about the governor's orders um, that would be inconsistent with the two events that HUD has proposed for you this morning. I, I will say that um, when um, ideas for ins, events in the remainder of 2020 have been posed to me, I have discouraged them. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you that's this. why I'm here. <laughs> I know, uh, uh, and believe me, I don't get any joy out of out of uh, out of ruining people's excellent event. Um, Parks and Rec has canceled all events for 2020, which would include what would ordinarily happen in October is the fall festival in the park, and what would ordinarily happen in late October, November or early December is the tree lighting ceremony in the park. Those have been canceled. And the Historical Commission, which typically this time of year hosts three fall speaker series, um, has been canceled as well. So th that's what I'll say as it relates to precedent and what I tell those committees uh -huh. when they come to me. Obviously, well, let me say this. I am well aware of the politics between the park and rec uh, entities, let's put it this way, Bondsville Mail, EBYA, and Park and Rec itself. And we would want to get their blessing with the understanding that these events will not conflict with anything they're doing, and they're going to be limited and outside to the number of participants. And I honestly think I wasn't there when any decisions were made to cancel those events, but those events typically draw hundreds of people. So um, I think we're in a different genre here. Uh, because of our limitation with the parking at present, hopefully it won't uh, inhibit us from getting uh, some programs going because the park usage has really skyrocketed during COVID. But, you know, we want to get the board's uh, read on the situation. So my, my two cents would be that the parks uh, for sports activities, that's a little bit of a different ball game because, well, no pun intended, you have, you have, you have parents going to see their children's games. Therefore, you're going to have, a minimum of three to four people at, at, at for, you know, each function per, per person uh, participating. Th 
This is a little bit different where it's a, uh, a, a walking trail uh, interactive. Um, I, I think uh, putting, putting a, uh, a, 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 me personally, putting a number uh, max of, of 25 people uh, and, and uh, maybe even the verbiage of masks required uh, would, would, would be beneficial. Uh, again, I'm one of three, just giving my two cents worth. I agree. I think that on I think it is. I agree with HUD. HUD, I do agree with you that it is a different kind of genre, different um, attraction than the other parks and rec activities. And uh, I personally agree with Kyle that, that we should go on and um, yeah, by, no, by the restriction. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, if the COVID uh, restrictions change at that time of that event, you know, we should be aware of anything. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I will uh, talk to the chief about the donation box, and we will keep you in the loop with regard to anything planned going forward as to these two events. And then we'll give you a calendar for the coming year uh, in November, I suppose, that'll help us plan ahead for those events. I was just going to say, HUD, maybe stressing a social distance of six feet. Yes. Social distancing masks. Yes. Agree. Okay. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Next agenda item <clears throat> is the Planning Commission solicitor, Bruce Rawlings. Uh, good morning. Thank you for uh, placing me on the agenda. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Tom Esty over for all the help he's given the Planning Commission over the years, and we wish him the best. Uh, but now we have to keep moving forward. So at this point, the Planning Commission has no formal solicitor. Uh, what I'd like to know from the Board of Supervisors is, is what is the process when we need a solicitor at our meetings or somebody to, uh, to bounce information back to. Um, example would be as a project coming up uh, this next week, uh, the plank uh, uh, um, sketch plan uh, for a large development by, uh, by, the, uh, by Scott Risbon and uh, crew. Um, can we request a uh, a uh, solicitor at the meeting uh, to help bounce things off? Because there's a lot of things coming up on this that are a little iffy. Example would be uh, the riparian buffer and the setback for that, the amount of disposal area that the um, developer wants to give us, which is like 125, and we require 150 uh, percent. So I, I don't know what the process is going to be, and I'd like to know how, how, how as a planning commission, we can uh, work with, the, with a solicitor up for the township. So Jason or anybody, can you give me some guidance? Sure. Um, basically, Bruce, the, you know, the planning commission is an advisory board to the board of supervisors. Um, it's, yes. it's a planning you know, commission. So a lot of the legal issues shouldn't arise during those meetings, but if you have, if you as a chairman have um, preference to a solicitor representation at a meeting, you know, any, anything on the planning agenda, I believe it was 15 days that you needed to have in advance. So that would give us but time to um, have our township solicitor, Mark Jonas, his firm uh, step in and represent so uh, this particular one uh, for next week is we've had the 15 days as a township. Uh, it is, has been advertised and they are planning to come and make a presentation. And I think it would be wise that we have a solicitor at this particular beginning of the process because I don't want to steer the the applicant in the wrong direction. If you if you might you and the 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 board might have a different direction they would like to see it go. So I think it's a this particular one would be nice to ha have a solicitor attending the meeting. Yes, I know it's advisory, but it's better to advise the applicant in the beginning than at the end, so that nobody's spending extra time and extra money on the on the projects. Uh, 
I, I thought the process would be as if I need it, I would re I request it from the, the Board of Supervisors when we need a uh, solicitor to attend or listen to the meeting and give guidance. Um, is that a good way to look at it? Did, did we not vote at the last meeting that um, Mark Jonas would serve as both the solicitor and the planning uh, planning solicitor? We no, did. actually, you didn't. Um, last last meeting, you guys, um, in my opinion, put the cart before the horse by letting go our our um, our solicitor for the planning commission. Um, um, I just wanted on record as well that I was not informed of that decision, which is another concern. But um, anyway, you guys did uh, not appoint a solicitor um, and. Uh, I, I know that Mr. Jonas, as I stated then, has a conflict of interest with the uh, the giant case, so I'm not sure what his conflicts are, if any, uh, regarding regarding the planning commission. But again, that's not what the intention was for your uh, your executive session. It was to appoint a um, a solicitor for the board of supervisors. What? It, uh, well, I did speak about the. Um, prior to making a motion of the need there's there's no need to have a different solicitor than your township solicitor um that's when things start getting confusing when you have someone else trying to interpret what the board's um direction is so two different in individuals would interpret things differently and when we do need a solicitor as such bruce just requested mark jonas or his firm will represent the planning commission for that evening that was included in the discussion last uh, meeting. Um, what, um, what were the uh, uh, the rates of Mr. Oste? I believe Mr. Oste is one ninety five. Okay, so so our our solicitor rate for the planning commission is going to go up as well. Well, we, we don't need a solicitor at every meeting. We shouldn't need a solicitor at every supervisor's meeting. I mean, um, and that's what the I think the the goal of, of the board should be to minimize the cost all around and by doing that i think um well the planning commission chair just stated that he has an important meeting next week and um that hasn't been even discussed by you guys that's because this is the first time it's been brought to my attention so um now that it's been brought to the attention of the board we're addressing it i thought right now um so that well, that's a, i i yeah i think we uh we need to make a decision and move forward. I mean, I, I, it's time to move, keep moving forward. So I, there will be a, a few times that uh, the planning commission will request, and we can discuss that, and you you can make a decision, yes or no. But I think this is an important one for the town for the overall health of the township for what's going to be going on there. And there'll be one other large one, which will be the Weaver track, which we'll need to discuss at some point too. Well, so those are the. Bruce, I think the the moral of the story is if our uh, the the majority of the board, not including myself, appointed the solicitor who believes he has a conflict of interest with the giant case. Excuse me. One then we're going to have another issue with the planning commission when we get to that same case coming up on the planning commission side. So we'll be back to a, a conflict of interest. So I think it's important that we uh, find a solicitor who is not going to have a conflict of interest regarding the. Uh, all cases, not just one in particular. So I think that that's yep. my two cents. I think first off, Kyle, have you received something in writing that there is a conflict of interest with our new solicitor? Yes. Well, I, I received that he he didn't feel it was, uh, Mr. Jones. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. You feel free to speak up. There, um, uh, I mean, regarding we can have a discussion. Your, uh, I'll ask him. I don't. Well, I'm having a discussion with you, and I'm going to finish that thought. So, is there? Have you received? I received an email from you stating that though you didn't believe, Mr. Jonas didn't believe, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, uh, though you didn't believe that there was a conflict of interest with uh, the the giant case, he felt it was in his best interest not to represent the township uh, regarding the, the giant case. And what I'm stating to you is, and as a planning commission solicitor, that's going to be a big portion of their uh, their workload. So the solicitor who handles the planning commissioner should both uh, be someone who does not have a conflict of interest regarding the giant case because it will be a big workload problem. I said there was no conflict of interest, but in the best interest to move forward, to take a distraction away from the township, this litigation has been 11 years, it's going to be distraction. So in order to avoid the distraction, 
he, we, the board, appointed Mark Jonas as our solicitor to help us move forward and to try to resolve issues. And, you know, there has been no conflict. There, there hasn't. Then why wouldn't you stay on board? To avoid distraction for the township. So but can, wouldn't it be a distraction for the planning commission side, just not the supervisor? Kyle, you don't need a solicitor at every meeting. Bruce, you're the chairman of the planning commission. We have I, I do not need a solicitor uh, every meeting, but I do need a one occasionally. So I'm, uh, I, I, can't I can't make the decision if it's going to be uh, the same as the uh, the supervisors or or mine. That's that's your decision. But I think at this point, uh, I we do need one occasionally. Yeah. Uh, to mix in the giant or whatever, it's not not my uh, not my realm to to worry about that at this point. I'm just worrying about the sh the, the short term of what I'm working on at this point, which is the the new plank plank uh, McCausland farm and the Weaver farm, which will be two large projects that need will need a solicitor's opinion uh, to uh, make it fair to the township and make it fair to the applicant. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Um, if, if I may, I'd like to weigh in on this. Who sure. is this? I don't know. Uh, Who's this, speaking? This is Mark Jonas. Uh, oh, hi. How are you, Mr. Jonas? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Rawlings. Um, so just let me sort of encapsulate this uh, with maybe some guidance for the Board of Supervisors. Uh, one is uh, the, uh, the chairman uh, correctly stated that uh, we thought it would be in the best interest of the township not just not our interest uh, to recommend a special solicitor for the our Carlino litigation. We did have um, we did check uh, various sources, including the Pennsylvania Bar Association ethics hotline. Um, but um, given the controversial nature and history of the Carlino litigation, we thought it would be in the best interest for the township not to have, as the chairman said, a distraction by our involvement, and that's why we recommended. Uh, that the township considers special solicit for the Carlino litigation. Uh, in terms of any other matters that are coming up before the planning commission, I think uh, I think the planning commission chairman's approach is, is the correct approach. Uh, we don't know anything about the new projects that are coming up. We have, I have little expectation that we have any conflict with those. Uh, I think the appropriate procedures with the chairman is uh, the planning commission has done is to ask the supervisors or the assistant manager uh, to have presence of the solicitor at the planning commission meeting um, and certainly we or somebody i or somebody from my firm can attend to provide uh, guidance to the planning commission i agree with the chairman that i don't think you uh, of the board of supervisors that you don't need this is every planning commission meeting uh, but if there's a major project coming up um, i think uh, and there are potential legal issues interpretation of ordinances um, i think obviously we and the township engineer uh, should attend those meetings and, and we can do so. Um, uh, but I, I don't think there's any basis to suggest that uh, because we have suggested in the Carlino litigation uh, that township appoint special counsel that somehow that suggests that we're going to have conflicts uh, anywhere else down the line. I and mean, lawyers have conflicts from time to time, but we have no reason to believe that any of these other major projects are going to pose a problem for us yep. to provide guidance to both the Board of Supervisors and to the planning. Okay. So you're you're in agreement the way out what what I was asking for is just an occasional uh, uh, help with with interpreting certain aspects of a of a plan or or zoning or whatever. So yeah, yeah. I, I think in some instances the you know the township engineer certainly uh, you've got a very expert township engineer uh, Mr. Klein yeah. and and Pannoni and I think they certainly can provide guidance and I think working together as a team with the planning commission and the uh, township engineer I think we can. Uh, provide the guidance that the planning commission needs in making recommendations to the board of supervisors. So, yeah. okay. uh, may I make a suggestion? I would, I would have to assume that if, if um, Mr. Jonas's firm didn't feel, felt as though it was a distraction to, uh, to, to work on any of the Carlino giant uh, uh, cases, then uh, now we're, we're the board uh, due to this decision. Uh, is talking about interviewing a uh, special counsel. My recommendation would be anything regarding the Carlino giant case be 
be it supervisor related or um, planning commission related, zoning related, any of them, that the special counsel would handle those. And then um, if Mr. Jonas's firm felt capable of handling uh, other activities, then, then so be it. But um, that might be a solution to the problem. Well, I think that um, I think that's what's going to happen regardless. If, if if there's a conflict, he'll step aside. If there's not, I think it'd be we leave it up to the discretion of our solicitor and follow his advice. Um, Bruce, we're not we're not here leaving you hang high and dry. And you did do the right thing to get on the agenda to ask how to move forward. Any time that you need a um, representation or you have a question, email the full board, and um, you know we'll take care of it for you and we'll we'll schedule. A Great. Presentation. Okay. I just, wanted, I just wanted to know what the process is. Or, or, or email. Okay. So on this short on this short notice here, uh, we can have somebody there on next Wednesday for an hour. I'll, I'll let Mark. Is that Mark? Can you have someone there or yourself? Yes, there? we 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 absolutely will. And and uh, Mr. Chairman, actually, we have two chairmen. Uh, you know, with the board may wish to uh, permit uh, us to be in contact with the planning commission chairman. Uh, so we can call yep. us from time to time and put us on alert and Great. we could perhaps talk and see if there's an issue that requires our attendance. But I mean, that's a dialogue I think that might be helpful uh, and expedite yep. for the township if we could uh, have that direct connection with Mr. Rawlings. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks. You have a good day. You do the same. Next on the agenda, do we need to vote? Um, you may need to clarify that, uh, that for planning commission purposes, there may need to be a, I don't know, I'm asking. I think we're gonna, I think we can discuss it further to come up with a policy, but in the meantime, I think if Bruce, like just to state it, so this Wednesday, this this month's planning commission is figured out, but I think by next But I think we should something. vote on it for, even if it's temporary, just to get it on record. Um, Mr. Jonas's firm handle the, uh, Luke, uh, Scott, what are your thoughts? Or Mr. Jones? Yeah, Joanna, Mr. Mark, do we need um, to make a motion to have you, uh, your firm, represent our planning commission at this moment? I don't think I don't think you need a formal motion. I think that's within the scope of our responsibilities as township uh, So I don't think a separate vote or motion is needed. I think the guidance from the board of the public meeting, I think, gives us uh, direction and the authority to move forward. Thank you. Moving on, let's go to D, the appointment of Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator. Um, George wanted to speak about this. Yeah, I, I spoke a meeting or two ago about Mark Ferrer um, as the Emergency Management Coordinator. Um, I made a presentation, but I forgot to ask the board for an appointment. Um, he has a working relationship, has started using Bob Nye, and he would like to be able to appoint him as his deputy emergency management coordinator. Did, um, did anybody reach out to, uh, to, um, I'm sorry, I missed your, he, he, had, a, he had an appointment for who? For Bob Nye. Okay, and Bob did he Nye. reach out to, or has anybody reached I, out to Bob Nye? To I was there when we were talking and he did reach out to Bob Nye and I asked Bob Nye if he would accept and he said he would. I didn't. I didn't know if he was even brought up to it. Um, I'll state for the record. I I love Bob Nye. He's a fantastic volunteer in this township. Uh, again, I think unfortunately it should have been done during the reorg meeting, but uh, nonetheless, he's a fantastic uh, volunteer and resident. Well, then I would like. I would like to. Any other discussion? I think that um, you know, if our emergency management coordinator, I think it's his choice of who he wants to have. His his deputy be and to for a working relationship and i think that i personally think in my opinion that the, our, our township manager is, is involved um in, in any emergency and i think that it would be it should be separated um for organizational purposes and the flow of information um so that's all i have to say so yeah, do i have a motion yeah i'll make a motion to appoint bob nye as the the Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator for our township. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Luke, would you mind, um, Luke or Scott, uh, whatever, would you mind um, letting Mark Ferrer 
uh, no, so he can inform Bob Nye. Uh, yeah, someone on staff will do so. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, okay. one, one of the managers, please. Do we have any um, public comments on agenda items? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm writing. I'm not paying you a lick of attention to that. Uh, I have solicited uh, our, our, our um, digital audience at 9 and at 9.30, and I have received no replies to address the board on item agenda item number 9. I do want to say, though, that the one thing that was supposed to be included on the agenda was the um, ratification of of our, uh, because we had switched attorneys, um, there's some pending deadlines due for only the Carlino matters at the time, and uh, the board didn't meet in executive session to discuss um, how to proceed with the files being exchanged and how to move forward to let the new solicitor get up to speed. And we um, we instructed, as the board instructed our new solicitor to file a. Um, some entering some appearances as a placeholder to start this um, new process. So I think that we need to ratify that and and have it voted on, saying that we approved it because um, it, it had to, it was time of the essence and we had to do it. And you know, we need to ratify it. So I think we have to make a motion. I don't even know how you do it. It's already done. Mark, how do you ratify something that we had just we had already done? Do we still have to make a motion? I think a, a simple motion would be that uh, that uh, to protect the interests of the township, we have been authorized to request uh, extensions of time um, or a postponement, as we did with the uh, PennDOT meeting. Um, just again, as a placeholder pending possible appointment of a special solicitor, I think a motion just to ratify the actions we've taken on the township's behalf would be sufficient, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I make a motion to, to permit our new solicitor uh, firm, East Burn and Gray, to file any uh, motions in the court system to protect the interests of the township uh, during this transition. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. And Luke, no comments? Uh, I, I, I direct this particular comment. Uh, um, first of all, uh, welcome, Mark. Um, <laughs> I, I look forward to working with you. Uh, I'd like to direct this question to you. Um, uh, it, 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 any of the dialogues we've had in um, in the uh, in, in since the last meeting of the Board of Supervisors need to be announced as as um, as executive sessions of the Board of Supervisors. I think that's an excellent point, and you anticipated my comment. I think the board should announce there was an a an executive session with regard to personnel matter uh, regarding the possible retention of a special counsel. Uh, yeah, so that executive session for uh, legal uh, discussion occurred uh, yesterday. Yeah. So. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.